looking at the diagram of our garden layout these are the new planter boxes you can see it there in red on the diagram these are going to hold companion plants and provide a border for each of the gardens it's only on one end but we thought we'd see how they hold up and how they do uh, before we consider going further with the border so come on in this beautiful gate that randy built when we built our split rail fences and we'll get started this is bed number one we have three 10 foot gutters five gallon buckets on the gutters nine buckets per gutter okay one thing i wanted to point out we have a lot of room here we have probably more room for more gutters but honestly with all of the buckets that we have, we have plenty of food and we like having enough room to walk around to harvest. We can get our wheelbarrows in very easily um, as we're filling the buckets. But there is some wasted space. So if you'll look this way, you can see I've got quite a bit of room here, especially in the back corner and then panning this direction again a lot of dead space over here in this corner here in the walk path I've got room right here in this corner and right here so this year to add to our companion planting plan I'm going to be using grow bags on the ground uh, there are a few that might need a saucer because the things that are planted in them like to have wet feet So they would need water all the time, but the rest of the things really like it fairly dry I will have to hand water them, but we get so much rain. That's probably not going to be too big of an issue All right looking at my little map here This gutter It would be on the far left. I am planting bush beans and cow peas. I'm putting bush beans in three, cow pea, skip, cow pea, bush bean, bush bean, bush bean. Now, with the bush beans, when I have planted them before, uh, the first year that, that we did the buckets, I planted four per bucket. We got scads of green beans. or so uh, the number of plants per bag was modified down to one to two for a five gallon container and I wondered about that because my when I planted four they did just fine so um, what I ended up doing was a test last year I planted some with four I planted some with three I planted some with two I saw no difference in the growth of the beans but I will say this I use extra fertilizing extra feeding not the pelletized kind but I do come out here and feed my plants with a, a foliar feed and a root drench that I make up this year in fact I'm going to change everything I'm doing another little test I'm going to do foliar feeds and root drenches with most all of the vegetables instead of putting the ring of fertilizer on the top of the buckets. But I am going to test just so I'll know um, which way works the best. Now in the center bucket here, I have cat mint. Now cat mint, all mints their odor repel a great deal of pests, but all mints are aggressive, so they need to be planted in their own container. Back to what I was saying about the beans, I lost my train of thought. What I'm going to do with the beans and the cow peas this year is I'm, I'm going to put three in the buckets instead of four, because I do want to companion plant with the beans. Cow peas are considered beans too. So in these buckets, um, I'm going to have a marigold in one of the beans and I'm going to have basil in the other. Both of those, uh, well, the marigolds help repel the Mexican bean beetle. 
In the cow peas, I'm going to put petunias. Both petunias and basil are said to enhance the growth of peppers, uh, beans, tomatoes. Can't remember the other one. But that's why I'm using uh, those as companion plants in this row. Okay, let's move over to the center. Moving to the center gutter here, if you're looking at the chart again, you will see that I have okra cowpea, okra cowpea, skip this, okra cowpea, okra cowpea. Now, remember if you've watched the companion planting, I think it was part two, one of the things you can do to help uh, confuse the pests is to mix up your vegetables. Don't have them all in a row. So that's why on the majority of everything will be mixed up like that. With the okra, it's only one per container. I'm planting nasturtiums with uh, the okra, just one little nasturtium. With the cow peas, again, I'll be uh, adding petunias. The center bucket will be um, a sunflower, and then I'll put calendula around the outside. All of these flowers are going to attract your beneficials, uh, which prey on the bad bugs. So I'm at NASCAR drafting going on. <laughs> All right, this gutter has our trellis. And by the way, these trellises have held up superbly. If you're interested in how we built them, we did do a video on building the trellis. It just is kind of long because I didn't know how to edit way back then. On this row are climbers, obviously, with black-eyed peas and musk melons, two different kinds. And again, I alternate, black-eyed pea, melon, black-eyed pea, melon. The center bucket here is going to house the herb dill. Uh, again, dill's odor repels a lot of bad bugs, but it also draws in some really good beneficials like ladybugs and hoverflies. Now, companion planting with the, the cow peas and the melons. Again, with the cow peas, I will be planting three cow peas in the bucket and using um, one petunia. The melons, oh, I'm only putting one in the bucket and they're gonna have two companions. Radishes in the front part of the bucket, just three to four radishes. I will let them completely grow. They won't be harvested. Radishes guard against the cucumber beetle, which is an enemy of not just cucumbers, but melons too. In the back of the bucket will be a climbing nasturtium. Again, this whole thing will be covered with flowers eventually. The nasturtiums will bloom the entire season. So that's going to help draw the pollinators to pollinate the peas and the melons. This is bed two, opposite of bed one. It is a weird shape because when we laid this out, I wanted a grass um, border all the way around it and then down through the middle. And we had to follow um, our rock riverbed. You can hardly see it now because it's full of weeds. Uh, it is something that we've got to redo, um, but it's a major project, so that's kind of on down the list. Anyway, we have this little four foot baby gutter. The other thing about this gutter and this middle one, in the summertime, these two kind of get afternoon shade. So I have to be careful with what I plant here. I have to use vegetables that are gonna grow well under those conditions. Peppers do fine, and so do um, the bush beans. So in these three buckets here, I'm gonna have a jalapeno, another kind of hot pepper, and then in the center, I am planting zinnias and then calendula around the outside. Calendula, if you remember in uh, part three, if you watched it, it actually exudes a sticky substance that aphids are drawn to calendula and when they get on it, they can't get off. So that's really good to have around beans and peppers and anything that gets aphids. On this row, on the two end buckets, I, they're just gonna be filled with nasturtiums. 
Nasturtiums is also a trap crop for aphids and they just draw in a lot of beneficials too. Then we will have um, four buckets of two different kinds of bush beans, different ones than the ones in bed one. So it'll be bush bean, a sweet pepper, bush bean, bush bean, a sweet pepper, bush bean, nasturtium. And my center bucket on this gutter again is catmint. The companion plants that I'm using on this row with the bush beans and with the peppers are, um, is basil, just one little basil plant. Remember I said before, basil enhances the growth and the flavor of uh, peppers and tomatoes and beans, I think. On this row with the gutter, um, obviously it's gonna be things that climb. So again, we're going to have four buckets of this time pink eye purple hulls. Yes, we live in the south and we love our cow peas. So we plant plenty of them. I'll have pink eye purple hull, then a winter squash. Pink eye purple hull, then a winter squash. Dill in the middle, and then finish out the final four with alternating again. With the pink eye purple hulls, I will again put petunias in there as their companion plants. Uh, three pink eye purple hulls in the bucket because I'm adding the petunia. And then with the winter squashes, this year I am adding chives, onion chives. Because in my research, there was a statement, don't know if it's true or not, but here was the statement that chives deter the moth that turns into the squash vine borer. So we're gonna see how well that works. Dill is planted here because, well, it deters a lot of things, but it especially deters squash bugs. That's different than the vine borer. They look similar in their eggs, but two different things. They'll eat up your squash too. So that's why the dill is on this gutter. Okay, that's bed one and two. Moving over to bed number three. Welcome to Tomatoville. Now I know I said that normally I don't like to have all of one vegetable uh, on a gutter. This is the exception in this bed three. The only thing in here are tomatoes. With the exception on the center gutter, there will be two pepper plants. Now, the reason for this is because of rain. We got so much rain last year. We always get a lot of rain, but last year was really terrible um, to include a tropical storm that came through. Tomatoes are notorious for getting soil-borne fungus, which usually happens when it rains and you get splash up of soil up on your leaves. Even though I heavily mulch, we had fungal issues. So, at the point before the tropical storm was coming through, we decided to build covers for the gutters. And that's why I want to put my tomatoes here again. Uh, plus we need trellises for all of them. So this just works for us. This year we're making a change in our containers. I've gotten 12 of these large green tubs, Rubbermaid tubs. They're re actually recycle uh, they're supposed to be for recycling. You can see the recycling label. Four will fit on the gutter with two five gallon buckets as you can see placed where I have them. We have not drilled the holes, the air pruning holes in these yet. I want to make a video on that when we do it because it's not going to be holy all over, all the way up. Uh, I'll show you why, or show you how we're going to do it and talk about why uh, that will be a little bit of a change from the five gallon buckets. In these tomatoes uh, buckets, just one tomato in the 14 gallon bucket. The companion plants that I'm using with the tomatoes, a petunia, a basil, and chives. All three of those are supposed to enhance the growth and flavor of your tomatoes. Uh, there should be plenty of room in a 14 gallon for that much 
um, those that three uh, companion plants. In the two five gallon buckets on this gutter and on the last gutter, I am planting the companion plants of borage and dill and nasturtiums. Now, borage gets nice and tall, so I only plant one of those. It's fairly deep-rooted herb, but borage, I always plant it near my tomatoes because it deters um, the tomato hornworm. Dill is going to be planted in the bottom because it actually serves as a trap crop for the tomato hornworm. And then nasturtiums, again, are just gonna help draw in the beneficial insects. On the center gutter, it'll be the same as this, except the green buckets, uh, the five gallon buckets will hold uh, two more sweet peppers and the companion plants for them again will be basil. All right, we're in bed four. There are four 10 foot gutters in this bed, I'm showing you these two right now. Back here, um, on this one with the trellis, I am going to be planting cherry tomatoes in each of the buckets at the end. Cherry tomatoes will do okay in five gallon buckets. They, they've always done fine for me. So that's where what will be planted there. Then I will have alternating cucumbers and whole beans, beans that climb. There will be four cucumbers and two pole beans. In the center bucket, I am planting yarrow and at the base, some catmint. Um, again, the catmint is supposed to um, deter a lot of different bad pests because of its odor. The yarrow flowers nearly all season long and so it's gonna help to draw in the beneficials. Now the companion plants for both the cucumbers and the pole beans are going to be the same. Again, I'm going to be putting three or four radishes in the front of the bucket and then the vegetable and then in the back a climb one climbing nasturtium. The radishes again guard against the cucumber beetle, so definitely important to put them in with the cucumbers. The nasturtiums will climb up again helping to draw the flowers will help to draw the beneficial insects to pollinate uh, the cucumbers and the pole beans. Directly in front of me, you'll notice the center bucket if you're looking at the chart again. The center bucket has the very same thing as this one, a yarrow and a catmint. The catmint is said to, to deter squash bugs, so I definitely want them by the squash. I've got three buckets here, three buckets here that will be summer squash. Now I'm not mixing that up. I know they're all in a row, but I really don't want to put them over here on this next gutter because behind it will be some melons. And squash and melons have very similar pest enemies, so you really don't want them side by side. So squash, squash, yarrow catmint, nasturtiums on the end in their own buckets, Again, to try to help protect the squash from the squash bugs. And the summer squash will have uh, chives planted in with them. Again, the test to see if it will deter the squash vine borer. Now we'll move to the final two gutters. Mm -hmm. This back trellis, um, I will be alternating musk melons again with uh, pink eye purple hole peas. They're gonna have the same companion plants with uh, the radishes and the, in the front and the climbing nasturtiums in the back. The center bucket is dill. Again, it repels a number of pests, but it also repels squash bugs, so I'm putting a lot of dill around here by close to my squash. In this front last gutter um, are six more bush beans. Nasturtiums on the end again. Remember they draw aphids, uh, the trap crop for them, and beans do like to get some aphids on them, so hopefully that will help there. And then in the center bucket, I'm doing another sunflower with uh, calendula planted around the perimeter. Well, that wraps up Companion Planting Part 5. I hope it was very informative for you. 
stay with us throughout the growing season and I'll be showing you as we plant all of the things we just talked about and show the progression and how how the garden does and remember bye and have a good one